Hi guys, I am Uchakwa El Mtangeni with Math XYZ and today we will be doing financial mathematics on the effect of different compounding period. From the previous five lesson, I have introduced you to the two equations in financial mathematics, the simple growth and decay method and also the compound growth and decay method which is also called the reduction balance method. From these two equations, we know the first one is for growth, which has the positive, and the second one is for decay, which has the minus there. So the effect of the different compounding period in, method, in financial mathematics is actually what is mostly used in, uh, in the real world, that the interest rate is compounded multiple times uh, in, um, in the period of a year. So with the previous lesson that we did, we were actually dealing with the interest rate, which was only compounded once annually. So uh, here we have a question which says uh, determine the value of 100 rand will give to grow in five years if the interest rate is calculated at 12% per annum compounded monthly. So in this case we have uh, interest rate which is 12% per annum but then they say that it should be compounded monthly. So that, that means that in the interest rate we still have to consider that it won't be compounded once and also in the period that the investment will be done in five years we should know that it will be compounded more compared to not, not only the five years but more in, in the period of five years. Then we still use the very equ same equation which is A is equals to P into 1 plus I to the exponent of n. The reason we are using this equation and not the dk one is because that they didn't mention that the investment or the value of the 100 trend will be depreciating over time. But this time we assume that the value will be appreciating since it will be calculated with a 12% uh, increase per annum. Then here we know that our principal value which is 100 trend, this is the initial uh, investment we can say that into 1 plus our i is 12%. Remember I told you that you must divide that with a 100. And then this will be to the exponent of 5. But then with this one, I would only have calculated the value of 100 trend if it was only five, per, five in 5 years, 12% per annum. But then that wouldn't, it wouldn't be compounded in, in a monthly basis. But then now that they say it's compounded monthly, we must now consider the, uh, the, uh, the 12 month per Per, per annum in this in the interest rate and also in the period. So the period that means that it will be compounded five times twelve, which of which twelve is the number of months in a year. Then that means that in a year this uh, hundred trend will be compounded five times twelve, which is almost sixty or is sixty. Then here with the twelve percent per annum, which is twelve over hundred, we still have to do that. But then you we also have to divide this by twelve to show that it will be compounded twelve times in a year. And then just going to a calculator, it will be. It's better the first thing that you do when you put the interest rate in the equation to have twelve divided by hundred already, and then then divide by twelve, not to write it the way I did. Then it will be twelve over hundred, which is uh, zero comma one two. Then divide by twelve now, which will be zero comma zero one. Then uh, patching everything in the calculator will be hundred plus one plus zero comma zero one to the exponent of five times twelve, which is equals to hundred and eighty one comma six seven. So this will be hundred and eighty one comma six seven. Sense. So that means that in five years period, if this, uh, if if hundred rand is being compounded with a twelve percent per annum compounded monthly, then after five years, this person will receive all the value of money because uh, this is actually uh, the value of money. So that means hundred rand in five years will be worth hundred and eighty one comma six seven, or will be equivalent to this amount in five years period. All right, guys, I hope you understood this, that if you have to compound multiple times in a year, you actually divide the interest rate with the number of that period um, in a year. For example, monthly, we know we have 12 months in a year. That's why we have to divide by 12. And also, we have to also remember to multiply the period with the number of months in a year, which is equal to 12. Then that means that if they say that it has been compounded quarterly, we know that we have four quarters in a year. That means that the interest rate will be divided by four and also the period which is time will also be multiplied by four. And if they say that it's semi-annually, which is uh, half a year, we only have two semi-annually in a year, which is two, then that means that the interest rate will be divided by two and also the period which we will forget to multiply it by two. And if they said daily, 
we always assume in financial mathematics that the year is equal to 365 days. That means that um, in uh, the interest rate will be divided by 365 and we should also multiply the period with 365. And then if they said it should be co it was compounded weekly, we assume that we have 52 weeks in a year. That means that the interest rate will be divided by 52 and also the period will be multiplied by 52. All right, guys, uh, let's do uh, two questions, uh, three questions of which it's the very same question. It's just that this time they are saying that it has been compounded quarterly. So if they say that it has been compounded quarterly, we know the equation is A into P1 plus I to the exponent of N. Then here we know that it's 100 rand, which is our principal value, into 1 plus our I, which is 12%. Uh, I told you guys to always have the 12 over 100 so that it shouldn't... Um, you shouldn't you shouldn't make a mistake of not dividing by the co number of period that it has been compounded uh, in a year then 0 comma 1 2 we have to divide it by 4 because we have four quarters in a year and then this will be to an exponent of 5 multiplied by 4 which uh, we just uh, punch that into a calculator will be 1 plus 0 comma 1 2 divided by 4 to the exponent of 5 multiplied by 4 then this will give us 180, 180,61 cents. This is when it has been compounded quarterly. Can you now see the difference that the first time it was compounded uh, monthly, then we got 181. Now that it has been compounded uh, quarterly, we get less. That means that a 100 trend value in five years time, if it is compounded uh, quarterly, it will be 180, which is less than when it's been compounded monthly. All right, uh, we will see the, the, the trend of this when we do this question, and then we will, I will tell you why uh, the value of 100 trend differs uh, with different compounding period. But then with semi-annually, it will be, sorry guys, uh, just, I was just going to write it. Uh, it's actually A, it's equals to P into 1 plus I to the exponent of N, of which we know this is the principal amount. And our i is 0, 0,12, and we divide by semi-annual, we know that we have two half in a year. That means that we divide by two here and multiply our period with two. So it will be five multiplied by two. Then here it will be 100 into 1 plus uh, 0, 0,12 divided by two uh, to the to the exponent of 10, because five times two is equal to 10. All right, then here we have 179,008 cents. So uh, even this one is actually less compared to the other two that we have calculated. When it's monthly, it has uh, the value of 100 rand becomes small. And then if it's uh, quarterly, it's 180. Now that we have calculated it semi-annually, it's equal to 179. Then let's do the last one, which is for daily. Daily, we know, I told you guys that in financial mathematics, we assume a year it has uh, 365 days. Then here we're going to have A is equals to P into 1 plus I to the exponent of N. Into P, which is 100 rand, into 1 plus 0, 0,12, divide by 365 to the exponent of 5, multiplied by 365. All right, then it will be 100, by 100 trend into 1 plus 0, 0,12 divided by 365 to the exponent of 5 multiplied by 365. Then thus it gives us 182,19 cents. All right, guys, now uh, this one is actually higher even compared to the one compounded monthly. So the one compounded daily is higher. And the second one, the hierarchies daily is higher, the monthly then becomes the second one. The fourth one is quarterly and the semi-annually is actually uh, uh, the last one. Then that only tells us that the more you compound in a year, the, the effect of a different compounding period, the more you compound in a year, that will actually give you a higher value compared to if you compound it once annually or you compound it semi-annually uh, going on and on. But then the more you compound it, that means daily it will always give you the best value. And uh, secondly, it will be weekly, I guess, if it's weekly and then, uh, then monthly and going on to quarterly and then half annually and then annually. That uh, only tells us one thing, that if you compound it many times, 
then it will give you the best value or the higher value i should say that all right guys i hope now you understand the value the, the effect of different compounding period in financial mathematics and uh, if you didn't please uh, just drop us a comment and then we'll have a follow up on it please don't forget to subscribe to Math xyz channel on youtube so that when we upload videos you will get a notification all right guys bye